Greetings, friends. Uh, today's devotion is a bit of a long one. Uh, comes to us from Psalm 22. Listen carefully, and you'll probably hear a couple of things that sound remarkably familiar to um, the Passion story, to Jesus' crucifixion. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you, our ancestors, trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took from me the you, who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ra ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones, and they share and gloat. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despair or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you come my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all families of the nations shall worship before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. So obviously in this psalm, David is in the midst of a significant trial, at least for the first, what, 21 verses or so, um, desperate for help from God and recounting the ways in which God has been uh, faithful to the people of Israel. And there's a bit of a turning point at verse 22 when it seems as though God has answered the cry of David, despite the fact that it seemed as though God was absent uh, day and night, as David said uh, at the beginning of this psalm, God showed up and delivered him from his people. And then the praises and thanks from that point on began. And uh, David says that he will praise God's name in the congregation, the presence of the congregation, and to all peoples. And he also speaks of the power of God as the, the ruler over every nation, uh, sovereign creator uh, as he is. My words, not David's. You may have, I hope at least, uh, recognized a few of these verses as something we hear in the Passion story, the very first uh, verse my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or words that Jesus spoke when he was on the cross at that moment, I believe, where he, for the only time ever in his existence, was separated from God as he hung on the cross and bore the weight of every human sin, 
past, present, and future that would take place. And then um, it speaks a bit of the, uh, the mocking and also the humiliation that David was experiencing, same as our Lord did uh, after his arrest as they mocked him when he was on the cross. And then finally, the um, uh, verses 17 and 18 uh, he can count all his bones, and they stare and gloat over me, and they divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. So this is a psalm that 3,000 years or 1,000 years before Jesus was crucified uh, indicates that that plan was already in place at this time when David wrote this psalm, uh, a plan for God to claim victory over our enemy, and of course our enemy is sin and death. And uh, even in the midst of the trials that we face in this life, we can be assured that the greatest victory that we have has come and is secure because of who God is and his faithfulness. So even in the midst of what's happening in our lives, and we will face tragedy, that we ultimately will face, uh, will be victorious in the end because of what Jesus did for us. And it's just a reminder of the suffering and the death that Jesus endured for us, not because we deserved it or were worthy of it, but 2,000 years ago, he knew that we would need the salvation that could only come through his death and his suffering. And so that is something that we should be praising and thanking God for in the midst of the congregation, for sure, but in our lives as well. As uh, David says, um, I shall live for him in verse 29, as we should as well. How will you live your life for him in praise and glory? How have you been living your life in praise and glory for him, for the gift that we have received in his grace? That's the question for today, and that is something that we need to be always reminded of because uh, of the nature of sin and our uh, disobedience that is so much, uh, very much a part of us. Thanks be to God that it's not held against us. A little bit long today, but let me offer this prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, thank you. Thank you again as I am reminded of your death and resurrection and the salvation that came to me by your grace. Continue to sustain and encourage me with reminders of that as often as I need to be reminded that my life may reflect my thankfulness and gratefulness for all that I have in you and may I live for you. All right, that's it for today. Psalm 23 tomorrow, very familiar one for all of us. And God's blessings on you until then.